As the adage goes, explaining a joke is kind of like dissecting a frog. Sure, you'd understand more about it, but it's now dead. Now if you've watched Gintama, it can get pretty overwhelming getting bombarded by all the references the show throws at you. Even more so if you don't have the proper context to begin with. So let me try to help parse the jokes which you might have missed. In this series, I'll be attempting to provide the context for all of Gintama's jokes and references which I'll go over one by one in chronological order. Think of this as a glorified translator's note coming from a guy who doesn't even speak Japanese. So, picking up where we last left off is episode 13. The Tokugawa Shogunate was a dynasty that effectively ruled Japan throughout the Edo period, from 1603 all the way to 1868. According to the Yorozuya, the girl in the picture looks like a pig. So, they followed this up by shoehorning the concept of Ham whenever they are referring to her. The translation here translates Kagura's response as Hami. But when asked about the girl's name, Kagura answered with Hamuko, which ostensibly sounds like a Japanese name. From this context, we can infer that Hamuko is a contracted form of Hamukodomo, which word for word means ham, child. But given that the person is a full grown adult, Shinpachi pointed out that instead of a Hamuko, the man is more of a Hamuo, which presumably stands for Hamu Otoko, which word for word means ham, man. Shabu shabu is a type of traditional Japanese cuisine, which is basically just a hot pot, while shabu on its own is the street name of methamphetamine. Here, we are given a brief teaser to one of the prominent antagonists of the series, the Harusame Space Pirates. The word harusame is made up of two kanjis, one meaning spring and the other meaning rain. When combined, the word can mean spring rain or it could also refer to glass noodles. I think it's because glass noodles are transparent and thus can kind of look like rain. Now as to how this relates to the whole space pirate shebang, I absolutely have no idea. In essence, Gintoki's butchering his Japanese history by bastardizing the great figures of the Sengoku period, namely Oda Nobunaga, Akechi Mitsuhide, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. The outfit that Gintoki and Katsura are wearing here is a nod to Harlock from Space Pirate Captain Harlock. Here, Katsura is reciting Johnny Depp's line from the Pirates of the Caribbean series, where Jack Sparrow would remind people to add Captain whenever they refer to him. Well, well, Jack Sparrow, isn't it? Captain Jack Sparrow. One Park is a nod to One Piece, which is an abstract concept that Oda still has yet to reveal what it actually is. Captain Katsura datebayo! Subetta. Here, Zura slipped in datebayo in a sentence, which is a nod to Naruto. Datebayo is Naruto's iconic catchphrase. Now let me first explain the title for this episode. I absolutely have no solid evidence for this, but Anecdotally speaking, when I was a young boy, we would do some dumb stuff 
just for the sake of gaining social approval, like figuring out who among us has the highest vertical jump by flailing around this square hallway trying to make contact with the ceiling. The more dumb stuff you accomplish, the more you are perceived as mature, and thus a man. As for the title for this episode, I'd assume that it refers to how boys would dare each other to figure out who's brave enough to touch a frog. PSA, if you do find yourself touching amphibians, please wash your hands immediately, and I won't judge. Bushido is essentially a self-imposed code of conduct for samurais. In Japan, snack and candies are aggressively marketed towards children, and thus often contain toys or other knickknacks to lure kids into buying them. There's also often a mascot that goes along with it, which in this case is the Kitty Man. Now, I'm not sure if the Kitty Man refers to any actual real-life candy brand mascots, but the Kitty Man, if you squint hard enough, kinda sounds like Kit Kat. This whole segment is a parody of a Japanese cooking television series. Rest in peace, Francis. Elizabeth is an enigma. Balls. An entity that us mere mortals simply don't have the capacity to comprehend. And as such, I'll leave it at that. Here, Gintoki is cosplaying as Senna from iShield 21, while Shinpachi is wearing full-on traditional kendo armor. Now, I'm not aware of any kendo anime in particular, so I don't think it's a reference to any anime at least. This whole segment is parodying Japanese television game shows. Since the producers just cast normal everyday people, the participants might have the tendency to seize up and be awkward on camera, just like Kagura here. Monster Penguin here refers to Elizabeth. So, Gintoki is implying that Elizabeth is something that comes out of his big off. As to what this exactly means, I also have no idea. So, this episode will primarily revolve around the concept of Madao. Madao is an acronym for a bunch of different things, often denoting negative middle-aged man traits. The original one, however, stands for Marude Dami na Osan, which roughly means no good uncle. For a complete overview of what all the Madaos stand for, you can click on the link in the description. But here's the gist of it. まだおはまだおでもまあなんとかだらしなくない男。あんたあれだ。マジでダサいおやじ。略してまだおだね。それだとまさにだるそうなおじさん。略してまだおだね。おいおやじ。なんだよこのまずいダッシュとおあげ。
そこでよ俺も男らしくちゃんとした職に就こうと思ってなおいおい燃えてる燃えてるおお責任感つう炎が俺の胸の奥で燃えたぎってるぜいやそうじゃねえ燃えてる literally means burning The word play here is that it could also be interpreted figuratively, like in the context of burning with passion. Hence, the gag. Hasegawa Senpai じゃねえすかお前は入国管理局をやめた大西っす When Gintama was serialized, Onishi was one of Sorachi's editors. From the little tidbits from the fanbook and the Q&A sections in the manga, Onishi also seems to be the editor that Sorachi is closest with. So this might just be some playful banter between the two. Domperion, excuse my French, is a brand of vintage champagne. It costs a lot of money and is often associated with affluence, kind of like Rolex in that regard. <laughs> Look, I know I'm grasping at straws by now, but Goro Kitajima kinda sounds like Goro Majima from the Yakuza franchise, eh? <laughs> Rocket Punch is a six-member girl group under Woolen Entertainment, and Fire is. Huh. No, I don't think this is it. Is in Ryote de Kaidan was taken a bakri juicing in Minagoroshi ni sarata jiken ga attaro. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about Japanese history, so I can't tell whether or not if this is an actual reference to any assassination attempt on the Tokugawa shogunate. Takasugi Shinsuke, Takasugi Shinsuke is based on Takasugi Shinsaku, who was also the leader of the actual Kiheitai in real life. The Kiheitai was a volunteer-based militia that's based on the Choshu domain during the Bakumatsu period. Here, Kagura is playing out a skit of a stereotypical Japanese drama. And I don't know if Sachiko is just a random name that Sarachi came up with, or if it's a reference to an actual Japanese drama that I might not be familiar with. Kondo named his sword Kotetsu. Now you've probably heard of the name Kotetsu in other anime. And notice how it seemingly is always associated with swords in one way or another. This all stems from the real life early Edo period swordsmith named Nagasone Kotetsu. But the lore doesn't stop there. You see, in real life, Kondo Isami is renowned to have wielded one of the famous Kotetsu blades, which turned out to be a fake. Here in the anime, it's being portrayed to easily break, which implies that the sword Kondo is holding here. Is a cheap imitation, just like in real life. Yokais are a class of supernatural entities in Japanese folklore. There's usually a defining trait associated with them. For example, the Nekomata is a cat yokai, the Tengu is a monkey bird man. Yokai, while the kappa is a turtle man thing, yokai. In this particular instance, Kondo was referring to the Matsuri yokai, which literally refers to a festival yokai in the sense that it appears during festivals, not to be confused with Yokai Matsuri, which is a festival celebrating the idea of yokais themselves. So while researching this segment, I was made aware of the fact that underwear theft is, in fact, not just an anime trope, but does, in fact, very much exist in modern Japan. And while I wouldn't go as far as to label it as an epidemic, it's not an isolated instance either. 
So now the question then becomes, does life imitate art or does art imitate life? And who's the BPO going to blame for this? <laughs> the face Gintoki is making here is a nod to Joe from Ashita no Joe. This is the face that Joe makes whenever he laughs. So there's a pun leading up to Yabuki Joe, but the road leading up to it is really winded. So bear with me. Basically, the dialogue here is describing Kintoki's fantasy of a seemingly dignified woman who has a hidden wild side to her. In bed. Now to properly explain this, let me first perform some language alchemy by breaking down the original dialogue and building up a literal translation through the power of AI. So, one of the most common references throughout Gintama is Abarendo Shogun. Abarenbo Shogun is a well-known Japanese television program starring the often referenced Matsudaira Ken. The term Abarenbo Shogun itself literally means wild, or free, or unhinged, or unfettered shogun. In Gintama, it's often used as an innuendo to refer to someone who is wild in bed. On that note, Gintoki followed up with Yabukichi Yokai, which is a pun on Yabuki Jokai, as they both sound similar. The latter is a literal name drop of Yabuki Jo. As for the former, well, machine translation unfortunately can't help me here, so if anyone knows what this means, let us know in the comments. From here on, Kagura refers to Otai as Ane literally means big sister, and Anego is a variation that implements a form of respect. The scene is an homage to Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third is a manga written by Monkey Punch, which in essence is a fork to the Arsene Lupin series by Maurice Leblanc. A thief stealing and giving it out to those who needs them is a nod to Robin Hood. Mickey Rurka is a former American boxer who has since shifted his career into acting. As for the Neko Punch part, I can't find anything in particular, but judging from footage of Mickey boxing, whenever he's going in for a punch, Ruka adopts this cat-like stance, which might explain the Neko Punch reference. If you've watched enough anime, you're probably familiar with the nosebleed trope, where someone would just spontaneously propel out a jet of blood whenever they think or see anything that is lewd. This all apparently originated from an old wife's tale. The reasoning goes that when teenagers see or think of something that is arousing, they would be overcome by their hormones, thus increasing their blood pressure, prompting a nosebleed. Now, like most things in life, while there might be some semblance of truth behind the original sentiment, it quickly gets bastardized with exaggeration to the point of it becoming comical. Yet, this trope is still regurgitated nowadays because it's one of the easiest ways to convey a sense of arousal in the medium of animation. Easy enough that even children can understand, apparently. As to why you would want children to understand it in the first place is something that I will willfully ignore. So, moving on. Akebono is a renowned former professional sumo wrestler. He's regarded to be one of the tallest and heaviest wrestlers in history. So, having the ability to knock him down is a big feat. Here, Kagura is cosplaying as the bride from Kill Bill. 
これを庭一面に敷き詰めればこのボロ道場も完全無敵堅牢無比な立派な要塞になりますわボロ道場のままでいいわつが違法でしょうが思い切りジュネーブ条約に違反してますよ The Geneva Convention is a set of treaties that were negotiated in the aftermath of World War II It was originally created to establish an international legal standard for humanitarian treatment in times of war. Shinpachi stated that using landmines would be going against the Geneva Convention. But that's not entirely accurate since landmines were only explicitly banned through the Ottawa Treaty of 1997. Then again, these are mere guidelines anyway, so. <laughs> The concept of sweet blood refers to how a diabetic person would generally have a high blood glucose level. Since a concentration of glucose is higher in the bloodstream of a diabetic compared to that of a healthy person, it follows that a diabetic's blood would therefore taste sweeter in comparison. And since bugs are generally attracted to sweet things, Kintoki is therefore the main target for mosquitoes. Bagendas is a parody of Hagendas, which is a commercial American ice cream brand that's quite popular in Japan. So, from my understanding, Bakuhatsu means blow up, while Atsu means hot. I think the dialogue here tried to connect the two based on how they sound. Or maybe they share the same root word, or perhaps kanji that I just simply do not know. <laughs> this is a spoiler for Fist of the North Star, so skip to here if you don't want to be spoiled. This scene here is an homage to Rao's death. This is a parody of a male in sweepstakes that usually pops up on Japanese television. And folks, that's all for today. If I miss anything, comment down below so we all can see. And with that, thank you all for watching, and see you next time.